so in this case, you know, you can see the latitude and the longitude and the outcomes, whether they won or lost. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these pieces, and I'm just going to, you know, pull out like a map. I want to see if this has any mappiness to it. And I'll pull a map out, and I'll just directly manipulate. I'll just pick up the data with my hands. I'm really good at this, and I just pick it up and dump it over into the map. And the map basically says, opens up the container, it's the shipping container, and it goes, oh, look, there's latitude and longitude. I know how to visualize that, and there are some names. I know how to visualize those. Maybe I want to clean this up a bit. You know, let's zoom in a bit. Let's actually teach this organism a little something, because organisms learn over time. So I'm going to come in here and clean it up. I'm actually going to set the text property so that it actually shows me the location of the battle. Maybe I'll set、um, one extra little feature. I want to actually know about who won or who lost. So I'm going to pull in a new little frame, a little visualizer, to show me win, loss, or draw. Right? A down arrow is loss, flat is draw, an up arrow is win. Maybe I'll even change the color of the dot to encode win, loss, or draw. So very visually, I can see it, and it'll give me a little bit of a template, a little bit of a legend. Here's a totally different data set. In fact, this is this is sort of segments as Napoleon was marching from one city to the next.、And、these are kind of like bars on a bar chart, because they have a beginning and an ending latitude. They have a temperature. They have the number of troops. Totally different data set, but it's in a standard container. But someone else defined it, which is the way the real world could work if we have a trillion node. You can let this stuff proliferate, and you can still fuse it together in interesting ways. So why don't I take something that understands bars, like a like a bar chart? So I'll go ahead and pick up the bars. This is a different organism for visualizing things, and I'll dump it on there. You know, and it takes a guess. You know, it tries to figure it out. But let's tune it. Let's go ahead and set the thickness of the bar to be the number of troops, so I can kind of dynamically encode this information. And maybe maybe let's set the color of the bar to be the temperature, so that I'm actually able to understand whether it was winter or summer. Hmm. Still kind of hard to tell what's going on. But what I can do is I can actually steal the genes that make this thing understand the bars and transplant them into the other organism. So let's try it. I'm going to go ahead and ex- extract its symbolic little blueprints, its little chunks of, of genes, and I'm going to go over to the map, and I'm actually going to transplant the understanding that that thing had into this map. So let's transplant it. So look what happens. Suddenly we have the bars, but they're on the map, and, th- and since there's latitude and longitude at the beginning and end, it maps them. You know, so I'm able to actually start to see really interesting patterns from this huge amount of information. I could also tune the organism to kind of、um, give me some direct manipulator t- controls. So I'm going to go ahead and say, "Show me the marches." Maybe organize them by start date, and then give me just a range slider because I want to play with it. You know, humans like to pick up objects and play with them. So now, when I wind the clock back, you can actually see Napoleon marching, and you can kind of go, "Oh, look at this! He had a lot of troops. One split off to Palatz. They had a draw. The main troop kept marching." They went to Krasnoy. Now look, look how thin that bar got. By the time they got to Krasnoy, they lost half their people before they even had their first battle, and then they lost. And then they kept marching, and they had like a really big win in Bordino. That was like the huge win, you know. And then they all kind of started retreating. You know, they basically this was a failed a failed campaign, right? But look at how easily that was for me to now understand complex information because I'm engaging my brain because we've got a mind, and because I'm able to directly manipulate things. If I go ahead and mark this one bar, yellow, you'll see it actually lights up in all the other frames. It's yellow there. It's yellow there. There's only one unique thing in the entire universe for that information, which means you and I can look at things very differently, but we can make decisions together about it. Even if you like to look at things on a timeline and I like to look at things on a map. So this was an interesting experiment. That was a little petri dish that we developed a few years ago, and that actually deployed. And、um, let me tell you a little bit about the results. So this was actually、uh, documented by the U.S. government's Department of Mad Scientists. <laughs> Not even joking. There is a U.S. Department of Mad Scientists. It's called DARPA. They invented the internet a long time ago when it was called the ARPANET. And we found 400 percent increase in collaborative decision making. We found a 300 percent increase in the overall awareness of all the information in the world. We found people could go from what the old system was, which took two weeks, to an afternoon to learn how to use it. So people could walk up and use this because it was things we manipulate things. We're very good at it. Most new capabilities are created as easily as I just showed you. It takes a few minutes to create a brand new capability, drag it into shared products, and have 10,000 people be able to use it and vote on the most popular tools. So the community actually develops things that used to take three years,、um, and it doesn't even take up anything like email and the network bandwidth. And this is in use today. Massively in use today, and it shows you what happens when you start thinking about things and how dramatically you can disrupt things if you start paying attention to nature's design patterns. Maybe the last point here is: where are the opportunities for growth and innovation and creativity in the future? 
Not so much space there. It turns out we're at the very top of the old mountain. We can't go much further, and we're fighting over the last scraps of land. But there's a really a lot of space here. And so that's what I wanted to tell you about, my kind of discovery of these hidden patterns in nature. And I, I want to leave you with, with one quote. Mark Twain said it. You know, history doesn't repeat itself all the time, but it does rhyme. And I think we should take advantage of that and try to learn from nature. Thank you. <laughs>